the most important news in the history of the world. You have brought the key to the mathematical code of Quran. We have a tremendous responsibility, and with it, there is a tremendous blessing that will include us in the elite of the elite. The first physical evidence ever for the existence of God. The Quran is the only scripture that has remained intact since its revelation in the year 610. Almost every other scripture, including the Old and New Testament and those of the Hindus and Buddhists, have either been lost or altered, effectively leaving us with the writings of humans who profess to know the original scripture, and this makes the Final Testament already stand out. Because of this unique feature alone, the Quran is also the only scripture worth subjecting to the highest forms of scrutiny to assess its divine authorship. And that's something the Quran invites us to do. It's the only book in the world with a self-proclaimed phenomenon that no power on earth can produce something like it. Even without this miracle, any sincere truth seeker should appreciate what's made the Quran so special and appealing to humanity for the past 1400 years. It represents the direct verbatim word of God. It's the final scripture sent to humanity and thus offers answers to the most crucial questions. It's neither time nor region bound. It uniquely speaks to every generation and individual. Regardless of background, we learn that the key for anyone to access the Quran is in fact sincerity. It's free of any nonsense or contradictions, which is significant considering the ignorance and superstition back then. Majority of its verses are extremely clear and to the point, largely thanks to the extreme precision of classical Arabic, along with the simplicity of the message itself. The book is very consistent in tone and style, which explains how tens of millions have been able to memorize the entire text. It proclaims profoundly simple and intuitive messages. That we must worship God alone. Abandon any idols besides God. Know that God is doing everything. Kill our egos. Not blindly follow our parents or ancestors. Learn from the mistakes of the past generations. Be prepared to be tested and distinguished from others. Be patient and steadfastly persevere. Not follow any religious laws not from God. Examine all words and follow the best. Not ignore God's divine signs and proofs. Not get stuck in small, irrelevant religious details. Not divide into sects, and so on. You got two hitmen, and uh, they're about to execute someone. And the dude is hiding in the bathroom with a gun, and he waits for his moment, he kicks the door, and at point-blank range, he shoots seven shots and misses. And then the hitmen uh, kill the guy, and then execute the person they were. Then they're at the uh, diner, and they're having a conversation. And Samuel Jackson's character is saying, This was divine intervention. We shouldn't be here right now. And uh, John Travolta's character is saying, No, the guy's just a bad shot. You're, you're reading too much into this. This is the fact of life. You're going to see two people. They're going to experience the exact same thing. One is going to be like, look, statistically, it's just, it's not a big deal. You guys are reading too much into this. Someone else is going to look at it and be like, no, dude, there's no way this happened haphazardly. When these numbers consistently hit that target, bullseye, that's how we know it's not just coincidence. The target that we need to hit was established in the Quran by God. The target was given to us. It's not shooting the wall and then painting a target around it. The target was already there. This has all been embedded inside the Quran for 1400 years. It's a very, very specific prophecy. It's a very strongly worded prophecy. This is a warning wake up call to everybody. A miracle, by definition, is something that's highly improbable. That's the definition of a miracle. And miracles are what were created, or what God sent, for people to have certainty. They say, how come no miracle came down to him from his Lord? Say, the future belongs to God, so wait, and I am waiting along with you. Previous generations were converted to believe in God by means of miracles. However, modern man cannot believe in God because of these. He has watched men walk on the moon. He is presented daily with the latest technological marvel. He has come across too many false claims, fake miracles, and fake prophets. He has become very cynical, especially when it comes to ancient myths and beliefs. Today's man needs something substantial. He needs an ultimate miracle. All the miracles that were supposed to have converted man over the ages were limited to a particular geographical location or a time period. By definition, an ultimate miracle would be something that is perpetual, not limited to a certain century or geographical location. 
It would be for all of the people to see all of the time. It would be something that is physical, touchable, examinable, verifiable, and irrefutable. All of us, at one time or another, have been compelled to contemplate creation. Questions such as the purpose of our lives and the existence of God have been pondered upon from time immemorial. There have always been those who choose to interpret the harmony and order of the cosmos as a fluke of nature, but a closer look gives clear evidence of a design, and thus a designer. The discoveries being made on all frontiers are making this picture clearer by the day. Most contemporary scientists are agnostic. If they profess their religious belief, they keep their science and religion in totally separate compartments of their lives. The conventional scientific view considers mathematics as the foremost example of a field where reason is supreme, where emotions do not enter, where we know with certainty, and know that we know, where the truths of today are truth forever. This view considers religion, by contrast, a realm of pure belief, unaffected by reason. Therefore, in the view of the scientist, all religions are equal, because all have been equally incapable of verification. For any subject to be a proven fact, be it a law of physics or the Ten Commandments from the Torah, proof needs to be given. Proof basically means that a statement is true beyond a shadow of a doubt. It is validation and certification, the seal of authority, the mathematical power, and the electric voltage that vitalizes the static assertion about any subject. Proof is thus a celebration of the power of pure reason. The lack of a modern miracle contradicts the idea that God is the most wise. It also gives the impression that God is not adaptable to our higher levels of thinking. Surely, if God really is what he tells us he is, he should be able to give us ample proof. A quick overview of the Quran before we go any further. Overall, the Quran contains 114 chapters and 6,346 verses which was revealed gradually over a period of 23 years during the lifetime of the Prophet. An interesting dynamic to this book is the order of chapters. They're actually chronologically different from how they were initially revealed. For example, the first revelation is found in chapter 96, the second revealed chapter of the pen is positioned as chapter 68, and so on. This structure is based on specific divine instructions that were given to the Prophet that God intended for the world, and that is what we have today. Another thing to note is that back then, there were no numerals as we know today. Instead, the letters of the alphabet served as numbers, and this system actually predates the Quran, and so gives us another objective or fixed property besides the obvious parameters like words and letters that we can use when analyzing the text. For instance, the word one in Arabic has a value of 19, which brings us to the significance of 19. Every book has a core message. And the core message we find throughout God's scriptures, including the Old, New, and Final Testament, is that God is one, that he should be worshipped alone. And we find in many ways that 19 signifies that. For one, it's a prime number, which aside from being difficult to work with, means it's also indivisible. You can only divide it by one or itself. 19 also contains the first and last digit, one and nine, thus representing the first and last, the beginning and the end. It also has a digital root, of one. But there's also other signs in nature, the metonic cycle, length of a pregnancy, or even the orbital period of Halley's Comet, and many more. Overall, 19 is significant, and befits the label of being God's signature. But one more thing before we move on. There is an interesting phenomenon in the Quran, never found in any other book. Out of 114 chapters in the Quran, 29 are prefixed with 14 sets of random letters at first sight, exactly have the Arabic alphabet participate in these initials, which range from 1 to 5 letters per set. The significance of these letters remained a divinely guarded secret for 14 centuries. Traditional scholars unanimously claim that the true wisdom behind these letters are unknown, but since the Quran's miracle was destined to come after the Prophet, this prolonged uncertainty was in accordance with God's will, preserved for the technologically sophisticated generations. The very existence of these initials hint at a mathematical code. The phrase, these are the miracles of this book, is found only in conjunction with these Quranic initials. A unique phenomenon that you will never find in any other literary work. And these letters remained mysterious for 1400 years. Scholars and scientists of all kinds have been looking at these initials, ALM, 
and the other initiatives in Quran trying to figure out what they mean and they could not do it. The computer did it recently. Oh yes, gods are gods are the servants of the societies and the cultures that create them. They have no existence apart from the societies that give Even if it is proven to you. Well, I'd like to see somebody prove it to you. I'm glad you like to see it because I can show it to you. Messages from outer space. Absolutely. To absolutely prove the creation of the fact. Yes, sir. That was Dr. Rashad Khalifa, the man who discovered Code 19. He was born in Cairo, Egypt, in 1935. He then moved to the United States in 1959, where he completed his master's and PhD in biochemistry, and soon naturalized as a U.S. citizen. But in 1968 is when the story really begins. I read the English translations of the Quran, and I didn't like any of them. At this point, Rashad realized that the existing English translations did not present the truthful message of God's final testament. For example, he noticed that verse 45 of chapter 39, which conveys a core principle of mentioning God alone, was distorted in almost every translation he came across. Yusuf Ali outright refused to translate this verse correctly. He refused to use the word alone, which he translated correctly in other places in the Quran. But when it came to, when God alone is mentioned, he changed alone to the one and only, which doesn't mean alone. Alone is a very specific word, and you can see the other translations squirm around it. Some of them actually distorted the basic doctrines of the Quran. And that was serious enough to encourage me to translate the Quran myself for my own children. I did it just for local consumption. But while working on this translation, he made a pledge to God to not move from one verse to the next until he fully understood what each verse meant. However, because I'm a chemist and not a professional religionist, I decided not to move from one verse to the next unless I knew exactly what every word and every verse meant. And almost right away, he stumbled upon something in this book that's been unexplained since its revelation, The Mysterious Letters, which we'll get into shortly. But it was this very curiosity which then prompted him to enter the Quran into a computer for the first time. After many attempts and many failures, I decided to put the whole Quran in the computer. I didn't know what to look for. So I had the computer count every letter in every source. And the objective was to look for any mathematical connections or any mathematical pattern that involves these letters. PJ6696. PJ7. PJ5. You gotta be kidding. This is one of the first books published by Rashad in 1973 that attempts to unravel some of the mystery behind these initials in the Quran to try and see if they have any mathematical significance. And sure enough, they did. He said that, look, these letters in the respective chapters happen in a frequency that you wouldn't expect if this wasn't a uh, biased text. The January 73 publication in the most popular magazine in the Middle East, after Sa'ad, had to do with the proportion of the initials. Kaf, for example, the letter Q in chapter 50, that chapter had the highest proportion of the letter Q. Surah Saad had the highest proportion of the letter Saad. Surah Noon had the highest proportion of Surah Noon, Alif Lamim, and so on. Every surah had the highest proportion of its initials, except Surah Yasin had the, the least, the exact opposite. And that was the, the whole article. But the problem was he didn't know why the frequencies of these initials in their respective chapters were unusually higher than expected. But the fact that he was able to demonstrate any mathematical significance was still quite significant as it opened up a new avenue of exploration in understanding the Quran's design and that perhaps there was more to these letters than meets the eye. Something interesting happened in the year 1974 and it has to do with the number 19 found in chapter 74. It turns out the missing piece of the puzzle was there all along, hidden in plain sight. And it helps that chapter 74 has always historically been one of the least or most vaguely explained chapters. The number is mentioned around the middle of the chapter, 
and unlike most numbers, which are adjectives in combination with an object, here it's the numerical function of 19 that is emphasized. And we'll get more into this prophecy later as it gets quite deep. But it's worth appreciating a few things. First of all, the year itself, 1974, corresponding to the fact that 19 is in chapter 74. Secondly, the very first statement in this chapter, Oh, you hidden secret, come out and mourn, has a numerical value of 1974. And here's perhaps the most fascinating miracle of its own, that from 610, the revelation of the Quran, up to 1974, are 1,406 lunar years, and 1,406 is 19 times 74. This is the year, this is the surah, this is the number, and I say, what's he talking about? Because I'm not thinking of uh, exactly when the miracle was discovered, because I started the research in 1968, and this was going on, and Sammy was saying 1974 is the year. And I thought he's off by a few years, but turns out he's exactly right. January 1974. Prepare for the shock. The document, the Quran, contains an exquisitely sophisticated control of letters across chapters, within chapters, in combination of letters between words, in total number of sentences, in total number of words, all interlocking with one another, rendering it impossible to duplicate, even with the most powerful computers. And the common denominator that binds all these mathematical, physical facts is the number 19. Well, let's get into some of the basic facts, starting with some of the more easily understandable ones. The most easy one is the number of chapters in this book. It's 114, 19 times 6. The next key parameter would be the number of verses, and when you add up all these numbers here, you get 6,234. But interestingly, there's exactly 112 verses in the Quran that are not assigned a number. It's these opening statements you find at the beginning of the Quranic chapters. They're basically counted as verse 0, except for two places, chapter 1 and 27. It's an interesting dynamic, and we'll get into why it's special, but for now, we can establish that the total verses in the Quran are 6,346, or 19 times 334, and also the digits that make up this number adds to 19. Moving on, the opening statement of the Quran would clearly be one of the most important phrases to assess. In the name of God, most gracious, most merciful. It's a very pleasant verse to read. However, Code 19 now offers deeper insight into the wisdom behind why God chose this phrase. The first item of this miracle is that the first verse in the Quran, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, consists of 19 Arabic letters. Here they are, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19. 19 letters. The very first thing you read in the Quran contains exactly 19 letters. It's the opening statement for the Quranic chapters. This is clearly very significant, but it gets even deeper. Every word, there are four words here, and every word is mentioned in the Quran a number of times, which is consistently a multiple of 19. That is a huge claim, that when you break down this opening statement to the four words that make it up, name, God, gracious, and merciful, that they all occur throughout the Quran in multiples of 19. At this point, you're encompassing the entire book of more than 150,000 words. A very basic probability assessment of just this isolated fact is already, for all practical purposes, zero. And you can see for yourself, anybody can... It's, these are factual observations. It is not an opinion. It's not nobody's... It is nobody's opinion. The word is which means name, is mentioned in the Quran 19 times exactly. Here are all the verses with name. Traditional indexes predating Code 19 also confirm this fact. The second word, Allah, is mentioned in the whole book 2,698 times, or 19 times 142. Rashad was a bit creative with how he illustrated this fact. If you read his translation of the Quran, every time the word God is mentioned, you'll find it in full caps and bold, with a sum at the bottom of each page of how many times the word God has occurred so far. And on the right side, you'll also find the sum of the verse numbers wherever God occurs, a completely different parameter, which also turns out to be a multiple of 19. The 
The third word, Ar-Rahman, is mentioned in the whole Quran 57 times, or 19 times 3. Here are all the verses with Ar-Rahman, the most gracious. The last word, Ar-Rahim, is mentioned in the whole book 114 times, or 19 times 6. And finally, here are all the verses with Ar-Rahim, the most merciful. That wraps up the total counts for each of the four words of the opening statement, and we find that they all occur independently throughout the Quran in multiples of 19. And the sum of their multiplication factors are also divisible by 19. If you go to Surah 9, you will notice that this Surah does not have a, a Basmala. It, it says here that this surah does not have Bismillah. Every surah begins Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, Kul A'udhu Bil Nas. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, Kul A'udhu Bil Falak. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, Kul Huwa Allah. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, Tabbat Yada. Every chapter of the Quran begins with this most beautiful formula. For some mysterious reason, Surah Tawbah hasn't got it. Hasn't got it any Quran in the world. You go to China, you get a Quran, it's not there. You go to Nigeria, you find a Quran, it's not there. He's created a problem for himself. Don't you see? He said, I'll fix you up with 19. Now he's got 114 surahs and only 113 bismillahs. And 113 is not a multiple of 19, is it? It's not. But we find that this missing bismillah is made up in surah number 27. So if you go to surah number 27, you will see that we have two Bismillahs. And there is one Bismillah Rahman Rahim at the beginning, like every other surah except Surah 9. And there is an extra one in the middle of the surah, right here in verse 30. You'll see another Bismillah Rahman Rahim. Now, the beauty, the beauty of any performance is you create a problem and you solve the problem. Whether it is in mathematics, acrobatics, aer aeronautics, aquatics. Create a problem, solve a problem. We're in the circus, in mathematics, in anything. You create a problem, solve a problem. And the manner in which one solves the problem, we applaud. This is great. This guy is great. Hey, he did it. And this restores the number of this important opening statement to 114, or 19 times 6. One, two, three, Four, five, six, twelve, thirteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, and nineteen. The first revelation in Quran, Surah number ninety-six. This surah consists of nineteen verses. The first revelation was nineteen words exactly. Here they are: one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19. The first revelation, look, this is visual. Something you can see with your own eyes unless you are blind. 19 words. So we are asking, how did that happen? So what does he say? What does he say? Coincidence. Surah 96, the first five verses were said to be the ones first revealed to the Prophet Muhammad. They're made up of 19 words. Count the letters. There are 76 letters, which is 19 times 4. Okay, count the letters in the entire chapter. There are 19 times 15 letters, or 285 letters in that uh, chapter. The last surah revealed was surah number 110, and it consists also of 19 words. Here they are. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen. So how did all of these nineteens occur? By mere coincidence or is this by a divine plan? So the only way out for this for the skeptic, the unbeliever, the enemy, is to say it's a coincidence. Another remarkable discovery. When you go through the Quran and look at every name or attribute of God mentioned, out of hundreds, you'll find that only four are divisible by 19. But if you look closer, the values of those four names corresponds exactly with the specific occurrences of the four words in the opening statement. There's an entire book 
on some of the superhuman mathematical combinations that exist just for this one statement using some very basic data points, such as the number of letters and their numerical values. To keep it brief, let's just look at the first few facts, but note that each fact builds off of a simple template, where each word is represented with its sequence number. So instead of name, God, gracious, merciful, we put one, two, three, four, thus forming a mathematical representation of this statement. That's our basic template. So in our first example here, after each number, we insert the number of letters, and this gives us an eight digit number divisible by 19. In our next example, instead of the number of letters, let's insert the numerical values for each word. And this gives us a 15 digit number divisible by 19. Now, instead of the total numerical values, let's break it down for each individual letter. So for example, instead of 102, let's make it 26040. And this gives us a 37 digit number divisible by 19. Now let's index each letter. This produces a 56 digit number divisible by 19. What's beautiful about these patterns is that they're consistent and based on fixed parameters that nobody gets to decide. Anyone can try and replicate the same test, but here's the odds that you would be competing with. About one in seven quadrillion. God alone. This word is mentioned in the Quran six times. Five times it has to do with Allah and one time with the Quran. But uh, the five times you take the verses and the surahs and you add them up and the total is 361. What's this now? 361 for the word alone. Worship God alone. This is 19 times 19. Now, listen to this. The word Quran happens 58 times. 58 is not a multiple of 19, but one of them is in Surah 10, where God says, every time you show the Quran to the disbelievers, they say, give us a Quran other than this. So it is not this Quran. So the word of Quran, this Quran of God, is, it happens 57 times, 19 times three. So you can see the accuracy and the intricacy. We add it up. All the verses where the word Quran takes place and the total is 2660, 19 times 140. Now, <laughs> the word Quran in every shape, form, or grammatical shape is found in 38 surahs, 19 times 2. If you add the number of surahs with the Quran, the word Quran happens, and the number of verses. The total of the verses where the Quran takes place, the total is 2,698. 19 times 142. Will this number ring a bell? Anybody? Get it. Exactly. This is the name. The word Allah occurs in the Quran this total, 2,698. The, the, the evidence is piling up. And at this rate, the world will end tomorrow. No? <laughs> I mean, something, something is happening. At this rate of uh, the evidence piling and the showing that we have a book from God. There's 30 unique numbers mentioned in the Quran. And the sum of all those numbers is 162146, a multiple of 19. Let me add uh, one more minute of elaboration on why this is miraculous. For example, the number 50, there's only one number 50 in the Quran. And it is written like this, Noah lived with his people 1,000 years less 50. So it was not written 950. Another place says, uh, we summoned Moses for 30 nights and increased them by 10. So you can see how the numbers being independent and how they add up to a divisible total. You're supposed to fast three days during Hajj and seven days when you go home, which adds up to 10, where the Quran says that. Of course, we know three and seven is 10, but that's essential to have the number 10. So you can you can see how the mathematical composition of Quran and how miraculous it is beyond the human capability. So this miracle is growing to overwhelming proportions. And Satan knew about it. I assure you, he did everything possible in his capacity to stop it from coming out. Because now the cat is out of the bag, like they say. They're, he can do nothing now. It's too late.
The significance of these letters remained a divinely guarded secret for 14 centuries. Traditional scholars unanimously claim that the true wisdom behind these letters are unknown. But since the Quran's miracle was destined to come after the Prophet, this prolonged uncertainty was in accordance with God's will, preserved for the technologically sophisticated generations. The very existence of these initials hint at a mathematical code. The phrase, these are the miracles of this book, is found only in conjunction with these Quranic initials. When you count this letter above, every time you see it, you count it in the Quran, in this surah, you will find that the total of the letter Qaf in this surah is 57 or 19 times 3. Also, the only other surah initial with Qaf, which is surah number 42, there's the letter Qaf as an initial, contains the exact same number of Qaf as the other surah. Now, when you go back to Surah Qaf here, you notice that Qaf stands for Quran. And if you add the 57 Qaf of this Surah, number 50, plus the 57 Qaf in Surah number 42, also 57, 57 plus 57 is 114, which is exactly the same number as the Surahs of Quran. You notice that the left Surah Qaf is number 50, and it consists of 45 verses. If you add the number of the Surah, which is 50, to the number of verses in the surah, which is 45, the total is 95, or 19 times 5. Well, this is half the story. If you go to the only other surah initialed with Qaf, which is surah number 42, you see that the number of verses is 53. And if you add the number of the surah to the number of the verses, you get exactly the same total as surah Qaf, 95, or 19 times 5. Throughout the Quran, the disbelievers in Lot are consistently referred to as Qom, which has a Q. But an exception was made in chapter 50. Instead, the word Ikhwan was used, which does not have a Q. This one extra Q would have destroyed this entire phenomenon. इस सूरत में वहां قوم के लफ्ज से डेविएट करके वह इखवान और लूत व اصحاب الاقت व قوم طبع अगर वहां पर भी قوم का लफ्ज आता तो काफ वहां पर 58 हो जाते वो اصول जो है मैथमेटिकल टूट जाता ये बड़ी कन्विंसिंग बात है व्हेन यू गो टू सूरह 68 व्हिच इज इनिशियल विद द लेटर नून एन इफ यू काउंट द लेटर एन Wherever you see it in this surah, you find that the total is 133, 19 times 7. This chapter is also the last one with initials. Chapter 2 is the first one. Between them, for example, the number of verses between these two points is a multiple of 19. And the same case exists for the word God. Additionally, Prophet Jonah was not referred to by his name in this chapter, which has an N, another interesting exception made, and it could have taken this one end to destroy the entire pattern. One of the most important functions of the Quran's mathematical code is that it proves and authenticates by physical evidence all the miracles of the previous prophets and messengers. Moses parted the Red Sea, Jesus revived the dead and healed the hopelessly blind and the leprous and so on. Now these miracles are mathematically composed within the Quran and proven by this code to be true, God was the witness. His words are divine. And what he has proven by means of the ultimate miracle is that the Quran is indeed his word, the word of God. We have seven chapters, initial to HM. And you count these initials in the seven chapters and you have 2,147 or 19 times 113. 2147, these seven chapters are almost one tenth of the Quran. And if you have one extra H or one extra M, this will, will not be a multiple of 19. It's an extremely sensitive mathematical composition. There are three chapters initial with the letter S, the, the heavy S, a capital S, Sad. And you count this letter and you find 152. 
S's, which is 19 times A. A L M in, in, in chapter 2. 9,899 of them. You count the letter A, the letter M, the letter, the letter L, and the letter M, and the total is 9,899. K, H, Y, A, A, S, the heavy S. This has to be chapter 19, and it has to do with the story of Mary and Jesus, the virgin birth, the miracles of Jesus, things that are normally unbelievable. And this is why God is strengthening this chapter with five initials, and you count them. These are distinct letters that I have in the book, the visual presentation book, with every, every one of these letters marked with a star so they can see for themselves. I mean, we are feeding them the miracle with a spoon. The, the first book was just tabled and numbered, and they said, how do we know you're not lying? How do we know these numbers are correct? Consistently, every single one of them, without exception, ALMS, ALR, TSM, TS, YS, YS is a sort entitled to YS, sort number 36. You count the Y and the S in this chapter, the 285. 19 times 15. Strange things happen in the Quran. There is a letter, yeah, this letter is questionable in many, many surahs. There are many words. Like, for example, Yatawafaku is written with a yeah in the word that is obscure, yeah. It's kind of a questionable yeah. You don't find a single questionable word in this surah. They're all the straightforward yeah. Yeah, seen. And after the conclusion came that we shall worship God alone and uphold the Quran alone, you know how popular I am. They are dying to find a mistake. It's a blessing from God that I'm not that popular. Just received a death threat the other day. Somebody said, this Saudi is going to assassinate you. Only three days ago. That's how popular I am. So you can imagine how eager they are to find mistakes. And you can't be sure if they find one mistake because one mistake means the whole thing collapses. And this is what I'm telling them. I said, I'll forget the whole thing if you find one mistake, because God is perfect. And his system is perfect. No wonder God calls this one of the greatest miracles. He stubbornly refused to accept these proofs. I will increasingly punish him, for he reflected, then decided. Miserable is what he decided. Miserable indeed is what he decided. He looked. He frowned and whined, then he turned away arrogantly. He said, This is but clever magic. This is human made. I will commit him to retribution. What retribution? Thorough and comprehensive. Obvious to all the people. Over it is 19. We appointed angels to be guardians of hell, and we assigned their number 19 to disturb the disbelievers, to convince the Christians and Jews that this is a divine scripture, to strengthen the faith of the faithful, to remove all traces of doubt from the hearts of Christians, Jews, as well as the believers, to expose those who harbor doubt in their hearts and the disbelievers, they will say, what did God mean by this allegory? God thus sends astray whomever he wills and guides whomever he wills. None knows the soldiers of your Lord except he. This is a reminder for the people. Absolutely, I swear by the moon and the night as it passes and the morning as it shines, this is one of the great miracles, a warning to the human race, for those among you who wish to advance or regress. Aleha, this atashar, over it are 19. You need no interpretation, no explanation is required. 19 means 19. 
But how can anybody fix up anybody with 19? He said, fix you up with 19. How can he fix you up with 19? I said, very easy once you see it. While we didn't see it, we have to conjecture other cases, somehow justify simple sentence like, over it are 19. When people tell you why 19, tell them because God said so. God said it is the number 19 that will prove that the Quran is not human made. 74.25 says, some people will say the Quran is man made. And 74.30, God says 19 will prove to you that it is not man made. In the 74th chapter of the Quran, in the 30th verse, the number 19 is mentioned, and this is said to be the number of angels guarding hell. But then in the very following verse, the 31st verse of that chapter, it, it details why this number was mentioned. And it says that this will give the people of the book certainty, and it will increase the faith of the believers. While at the same time, those who have diseases in their hearts, and those who disbelieve, will be deriding this information. So there are two responses. One is that it can give us certainty and increase our faith, or somebody might say, oh, that's nothing. And suddenly, a very long and explicit verse that specifically says the number of the angels, i.e. their number, which is a fitna, and not the angels themselves, i.e. the number 19 just mentioned, is and will do the following. It will be a fitna, or trial for the non-believers, those who have been given the scriptures, i.e. the Christians and Jews, will know for sure and without doubt, i.e. with certainty. The believers will increase in faith. Both the people of the book and the Muslims will no longer have doubt, but those with, who are sick in their hearts and those who wish to hide the truth or disbelievers will say, what does Allah want or intend with such an example? Basically, rejectors will say it doesn't mean anything. That verse that details the wisdom of the number 19 comprises 19 times 3 words, or 57 words. The words in that chapter prior to this verse are 95 words, or 19 times 5. If we count the words within the first 19 verses of that chapter, they're 19 times 3, or 57 words. If we count the letters coming all the way down to just before, but not including the mention of the number 19, there are 361 letters, which is 19 squared, or 19 times 19. Did all of these 19s occur by coincidence near the mention of the number 19? This is the killing of a Tucson Muslim leader, the Rashad Khalifa. He was found murdered yesterday in his Tucson mosque. All Muslim countries, they hate him. Uh, in, in the Middle Eastern countries, is not well received. He was assassinated. Whoever did it, did it the right way. Not telling anybody. You know, this thing has to be done. We do it. You, you're the only one who knows about it. Say Khalifa died violently. There were reports of gunshots. The controversial leader also said Muslims should worship God alone. Police say those beliefs may have been related to his killing.